Okay, let's talk about issuing bonds at a premium now. So before we issued them at a discount, now we're going to issue them at a premium. So in this case, our contract rate is higher than the market rate. That's why we issue it at a premium. We can see that we issued it at a premium because we said that we issued this $1,000 bond for $1,200. So we got more than the face value of our bond. So that tells us it's at a premium. So how do we find out what our premium is? Well, we compare our cash received, we got $1,200, to our face value, that's $1,000. So the difference, because our cash received is greater than our face value, is our $200 premium. So let's put it into the journal entry. We issue bonds because we want to borrow money. So we got our cash that we borrowed of $1,200. I'm going to skip a line because I want to make the point that we're going to repay this bond for the face value, which is $1,000. And the difference in what we got and what we have to repay is our premium. You will recall that a debit balance is for discounts and now you will see that a premium has a credit balance. So I need a credit to balance this journal entry so that makes it a premium also. Lots of different ways to see that this is a premium. Okay let's look at the second journal entry where we pay our interest payment to our bondholders and amortize our premium. All right, let's talk about paying our bondholders first. I'm going to skip two lines. So I'm going to talk about how much I'm going to pay them. I'm always going to pay them face value times contract interest rate times time. So this number in this situation won't change. Face value times 6% times half a year is still that I need to pay them their $30. I need to amortize my premium. That means slowly reduce my premium over the life of the bond. So I started off with a premium of $200. We can see it here. We can see it here. So let's find out how much we need to reduce at each period. The total number of periods of this bond, this is a five-year bond and it pays interest every six months. That means twice a year. So five years times twice a year equals 10 periods. So I'm going to amortize this bond by 200 divided by the 10 periods. So I'm going to amortize it $20 every interest payment period. All right, so a premium has a normal credit balance. If I want to slowly reduce that credit balance, I need to debit it. So I put in my premium and I debit it for $20. So now I can solve for my interest expense. You can do this just by looking and seeing what entry you need to balance. I can see that I need another $10 to balance, and I got that because a premium reduces interest expense, which means that I would say 30 minus 20 equals 10. So if I subtract, then I can get my interest expense. So you can always remember the rule that for a discount you add to interest expense, and for a premium, you subtract from interest expense. And it makes sense conceptually because here our contract rate was greater than our market rate. So over time, we're getting that contract rate to the market rate. So that's what we're really doing here by amortizing this premium. Okay, the next step is to retire the bond at the end of five years. So let's just look and see what we have so far. On day one, when we issued this bond, we put bonds payable for $1,000 and we credited our premium for $200. So two credits together are added. So we could say that our carrying value is $1,200. So every six months, we amortized our premium. So each time we did that, we did it 10 times. If I look and see how much my balance is in my premium account after I amortized it, it should be down to zero. So I'm left with nothing in my premium and just a bonds payable of $1,000. So now my carrying value is $1,000 because I've already amortized my premium and I've moved it all to reduce my interest expense over time. So after five years, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the bonds payable account for $1,000 because I'm repaying it all. And I'm going to give my bondholders back the cash that I owed them. And that will repay my bond at the end of maturity.